I remember uh, hearing a story one time. I heard the story as though it were true, so I'm assuming that it uh, was a true story of a uh, young preacher who had uh, gone to a new work and uh, one of the elders in the congregation where he had gone uh, was of the opinion that uh, social drinking was acceptable. Uh, that is, that uh, it was okay to have a, a drink every now and then, uh, as long as one didn't practice drunkenness. Well, the young preacher uh, rightfully opposed that, and, and uh, they studied together about it, and uh, he, he was adamant that, no, the Bible teaches that you are to abstain from uh, beverage alcohol, that beverage alcohol is, is sinful and, and is not to be uh, partaken. Well, over the course of time, this uh, particular elder was able to uh, kind of uh, wear that young man down and uh, eventually convinced him that uh, it was okay to have a drink every once in a while, that uh, beverage alcohol itself was not sinful, that it was only if you drank enough to become drunk that it was sinful. And after convincing this young preacher that it was okay to take a drink every once in a while, it wasn't very long until uh, this young preacher was a uh, full-blown alcoholic in the throes of full addiction to beverage alcohol. And when I think about that story, I can't help but think about the doctrine of Balaam. Because we, we uh, uh, know the, the story of Balaam, and, and that uh, title of the lesson that you see on the screen, the doctrine of Balaam, it, it actually comes from Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14, where in writing to the church at Pergamos, the Lord says, but I have a few things against you because you have those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. And so uh, the letter to Pergamos refers to the doctrine of Balaam there. And we understand that uh, when uh, this charge was made to the church at Pergamum, uh, it's not saying that it's the exact same council. We'll look at the council of Balaam here uh, shortly. But it's, it's not uh, necessarily referring to the exact same thing, that there was somebody uh, there at uh, Pergamos who was uh, teaching that it was okay to commit fornication. Rather, the, the doctrine of Balaam or the, the, the teaching pattern pattern of Balaam that it is drawing from there is uh, teaching that error is okay. That, that error is something that can be tolerated, that it can be uh, 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 participated in, and it's okay. Well, uh, we understand from the reference there in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14 that the doctrine of Balaam was something that was uh, contrary to the will of the Lord. He goes on and says in verse 15, Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, uh, another uh, uh, pattern of false teaching, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. We understand the symbolism of the, the sword of his mouth there is, is referring to his word. That is his word fights against uh, the kind of false teaching of Balaam and the false teaching of the Nicolaitans, uh, that pattern of, of false teaching, that, that the, the truth of God's word fights against those things and opposes those things. And so we want to uh, look at the doctrine of Balaam somewhat this morning. The background for that statement in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14, of course, is uh, Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 through 9, where after Balaam had, had uh, tried to curse the children of Israel, and God would not allow Balaam to curse the children of Israel, 
We come to uh, the last attempt, the, the fourth time that he, that he tried to curse them and wasn't able to. It says in chapter 24 and verse 25, So Balaam rose and departed and returned to his place. Balak also went his way. And then we come to chapter 25. And it says, Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove. And the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor. And the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moses said to the judges of Israel, Every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor, that is, uh, who were engaging in, in idolatry, in the fornication and, and idolatrous worship that, that was associated with Baal. Uh, they were supposed to kill any of the ones who were, who were involved in that. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Kind of reminds us of the young man in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 who was sitting in the midst of the congregation engaged in gross immorality, doing it right out in the open in everybody's face. It goes on and it says, Who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting? Now when Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman, through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. And there's no reference in this passage that what Israel was doing here was uh, in any way related to Balaam. But rather it's in the other mentions of Balaam that we see the association here. Uh, right after Balaam tries to curse Israel and he's not able to and he blesses them instead, here you find Israel so sinning against God that God uh, commands executions and brings a plague against the children of Israel. And how is it that that came about? Well, we just read in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14 that it was at the council of Balaam that Balak put this stumbling block. Had the, had the uh, uh, women of Moab go out there to, to tempt the children of Israel and the children of Israel fell right into that temptation and it caused their destruction. 